Good evening to the Aubrey Butte Neighborhood Association 2020 general meeting. Thank you for joining us. Um, this is our first annual meeting of this year, our first virtual meeting. And for those of you that remember our last general meeting that was held in a blizzard, I think it points to the merits of virtual meetings. So uh, I don't know, maybe this is part of what the future holds for us. Uh, we have, I think, a presentation that has content that's timely and relevant. Ultimately, your feedback will tell us if that's the case. But with that said, uh, I will say that we're gonna try and move briskly, uh, make sure that we keep this within the hour that we assigned. And with that, I'd like to introduce your board of directors. There are seven on your board of directors. Uh, two are relatively new, Janelle Sherlock and Chris Pearson. And I will tell you that there is generally always room for more on the board. So heavy hands make for light lifting. If this is something you think you might be interested in, I encourage you attend a board meeting. They're gonna be virtual for a while, but attend a board meeting, get to know us, get to know what we do, uh, basically, there's one primary goal for the ABNA board, and that is to represent all of the members and their interests collectively. We do that based on a document that's on the ABNA website called the Guiding Principles. That's our mantra. That's how we work. No one has an individual agenda. It's really about the members. And at the end of the day, it's really that simple. So I have some administrative stuff. We'll move forward to the agenda. We're going to review, as we do almost every general, general meeting, some acronyms. Uh, I want to speak to you about the outcomes of some voting that we did. We'll speak about FireWise, which is near and dear to all of us, especially in light of the latest fire season that we had here in Central Oregon. I'm going to introduce you to the NLA, the Nader Neighborhood Leadership Alliance Advisory Committee. If you know about it, I'll give you an update on what we're doing. Uh, we're going to speak briefly to Ben's growth and the issue of density and the question about urbanizing our city. And specifically, we want to address uh, the two bonds that are on the ballot this November. Uh, pretty important to the future of our city, but we will not advocate. We're going to uh, just try to provide you lots of information. We encourage you to make your own decision. We're going to reference some tools that you personally can use to help you understand the impact to you personally. So when we speak about, oh, I, I need to back up a second too. Let me, let me just explain too, as a, as a, as a part of the, um, the outcome of the elections. First of all, the board, as I presented, was elected. The bylaws proposed were approved. Uh, for the vote on nonprofit, um, the majority said no, but there was a significant minority of people that abstained. So we may revisit that in the future. Uh, we were brief in our description of the potential impact of 501c3, but um, the, the initial feedback from your voting is maybe not. Uh, and for those 141 new members that joined us just this month in October. Uh, we have to apologize a bit that because we use a third party so that we have discrete uh, voting and uh, we observe your privacy, that cutoff was shortly after September month end. So many of you new members didn't get a ballot and you will in the future. So with that, we'll move on to acronyms. And I will say to you that as Pauline brings up acronyms, I think, next slide. Yeah, so HOA, NA, NLA, AHAC, the acronyms go on and on, but the three that we really wanna to speak to today, tonight, that we hear about so often that are sometimes confusing are the HOA, the NA, and the NLA. And just to make it a little easier to read, our next slide is gonna just focus on the differences between those three. HOA, your homeowners association, represents owners, home owners, largely concerned with the aesthetics and the preservation of your neighborhood, uh, uses CCNRs. It's not a part of city code. Usually more than one HOA is in a neighborhood association. In Aubrey Butte, we have over 20 
HOAs in the Auburn Butte Neighborhood Association. The HOAs collect dues. Neighborhood associations, and there are 13 in Bend, do not collect dues. The neighborhood associations are funded by tax dollars. They represent everyone who lives and works in our neighborhoods that is 18 years or older. That's businesses, homeowners, and renters. Big distinction. Uh, in the city code and a key function for that is the role that neighborhood associations have in land use, which was the genesis of creating neighborhood associations and community building. We'll speak more to that a little later. The Neighborhood Leadership Alliance is a newly created, relatively newly created, uh, July of 2018, advisory committee to city council. One member from each neighborhood association is on the Neighborhood Leadership Alliance. It's funded by tax dollars. Appointments are made by the mayor with council approval. We represent again, neighborhood associations, businesses and homeowners. And a key function is to be a voice from residents to city council, from city council to residents. And I'll give some examples later in our presentation about the work that the NLA does and has done. But um, before that, I'm going to pass this over to Jeff Conrad. Jeff is ABNA board member and land use chair, and he's going to speak to you about an important topic always year round in Central Oregon, and that is fire safety. Jeff? Thanks, Hans. So yes, let's go ahead and shift the discussion to a topic that in reality is a very real threat to all of us. And of course that's wildfire. You know, the fact is we all live in wildfire country. Uh, a fact that was recently reinforced with the devastation that was experienced throughout our state. You know, we here in Bend, hey, we were very lucky. We escaped with just a few days of some really, really bad smoke. Now, while a lot of discussion regarding fire mitigation tends to be at the state and the federal level, the reality is that we can and we should address it at the local level as well. And that's starting with our own homes and our own neighborhoods. You may have heard of an organization called Firewise USA. It's a voluntary national program that's dedicated to helping neighborhoods take action in preparing and protecting their homes against the threat of wildfire. There's actually four communities on Aubrey Butte that are already Firewise USA participating sites. And those four are Aubrey Butte HOA, Aubrey Glen HOA, Aubrey Park HOA, and Rimrock West HOA. So as we're all sitting here tonight, you might be asking yourself, okay, I hear you, but what can I do to help protect my home and my neighborhood? So I would suggest that there are three steps that you can take. Number one, consider becoming a firewise participating community in the neighborhood in which you live. It doesn't have to cost you a dime. You simply need to be willing to invest one hour of sweat equity per year, reducing fire risk on your property. And it could be a big step in helping mitigate your community's risk of wildfire. I would ask you to think about that and discuss that possibility with your individual HOA. So that's the first thing. The number two thing is I'd ask you to step outside your house and survey your individual yard. Determine if you have a defensible zone around your house. In other words, is there sufficient separation between your house and your shrubs and trees that could potentially catch fire? Are your gutters free of pine needles? And are your trees throughout your yard actually limbed up to a high enough height that they won't ignite due to tall grasses in your yard or overgrown shrubs? So that's number two. Number three, contact your local project wildfire office at the number listed or email them for more information. 
I got to tell you, these folks are absolutely top shelf and they're dedicated to helping you. So bottom line, let's take fire mitigation efforts seriously here in all review. So I want to thank you for listening to that. And now uh, for the next few minutes, I'm going to turn you back over to Hans Jorgensen, who's going to talk about Ben's Neighborhood Leadership Alliance, as he said, known as the NLA. Hans? Thanks, Jeff. And, and I want to reiterate, um, Jeff spoke to what FireWise can do for all of us, but because we live on the west side, um, keep in mind that some of the very bad destruction that happened in Paradise, California, was caused by fires that were two miles away where embers were carried to homes that weren't defensible, weren't protected, didn't practice the best measures. So we're not immune. Uh, a fire miles away might seem miles away, but those embers are still a threat to us. So FireWise points out ways that we can mitigate our, our exposure. And with that being said, I wanna talk about the Neighborhood Leadership Alliance uh, activities that impact Aubrey Butte, and the city of Bend. For those that may be new to Bend or don't know about the advisory committees, there are quite a few advisory committees, affordable housing, uh, Bend Economic Development. There are many committees. The NLA Neater Neighborhood Leadership Alliance was specifically designed so that all the residents had a voice, a seat at the table to talk to city council. Uh, that being said, early on, the NLA identified two very important issues that residents said they really wanted to work on. One was traffic safety, the second was land use, and indirectly boundaries of the neighborhood associations. Now, speaking first to traffic safety, um, the NLA went to council, asked for funding for a neighborhood street safety program. That funding was granted. The focus of that NSSP program was basically street safety, pedestrian safety, particularly safe crossings for students going to schools, which was almost half of the projects entertained. And initially that program was funded by council for $800,000 for the 2019-2021 biennium. 360 applications submitted to Streets and Operations, 260 met criteria and Streets and Operations of the City of Bend with NLA got those down to approximately two per NA, ultimately 25 projects that were prioritized by the Neighborhood Leadership Alliance. Four of those projects have already happened or will be completed this season, this construction season, spring through fall. Four more, possibly a fifth, will be finished next year. And there are additional monies on the transportation bond. Again, not advocating, just pointing out that there are monies on the transportation bond for street safety. That being said, I want to give you an example. In our rebuke, anytime you drive down Mount Washington, get near the golf course, all of a sudden, notice, you notice recently there are signs and there's a crosswalk and there's numerous opportunities to understand that people are crossing there at the DRT, the Schutz River Trail, and the golf course. That was the top ABNA safety project. It didn't quite make the cut. I think it ended up number nine. But the point is the visibility that that program got, the tremendous community support, the citizen service requests that followed up, Streets and Operations found a way to make that happen. So it is an indirect positive outcome of the street safety program. Moving on to land use, um, we knew, city council knew for a long time that folks were frustrated with the land use process. They felt like sometimes they'd come to city council with their concerns, they were frustrated, but at the the bottom of that largely was the education process. Um, land use here in Oregon's tricky, quirky. We'll talk about that a little later. But an important part of the support that the council gave NLA was the directive, and it was included in the biennium goals to work on the land use education process. The early part of that process has resulted in administrative changes, some recommended code changes that council is under consideration right now what we think are common sense things, but things that will facilitate public interaction. I think it will garner more support, public support for developers. And I think it also will help ease the frustration that a lot of people have identified when the NLA's land use working group did broad outreach for 
frustration and the lack of understanding was a big part of it. So education is key. I think part of what our program aims to do is help people understand how to engage, when to engage, why to engage, and honestly, sometimes why it's too late to engage. That is, you, get in, you need to get involved early in the land use process. But that education plan is expected to be completed towards June of 2021. So it's been a long process, a lot of work to do. I think it's gonna be very productive for all of us. And our land use chairs are a vital part of that, I would add. Um, lastly, something that the NA is, NLA is just embarking on, neighborhood association boundaries. When, when neighborhood associations were first developed here in Bend almost 20 years ago, Bend was a lot smaller. Bend has grown substantially. That's that's uncontested. The demographics have shifted, shifted significantly. That's uncontested. But also with our UGB approval in 2016, we gained 2,380 acres that are gonna be developed. People are gonna live there and they need representation as well as anybody else. So the goal of the NLA boundary project is to move in the direction of equitable representation for everyone in Bend. That was the idea of neighborhood associations in the first place. Uh, that's the way we're moving. It'll be a long process, but basically the NA, NLA's short-term goal, and that is by early next year, is to provide city council an opportunity to consider making any boundary adjustments a goal in the biennium process for 2021 to 2023. So again, very important project, uh, and we'll see how it goes. These things sometimes take time and there's a little back and forth and we try to get all the stakeholders involved, but it does take time. And with that, I wanna move on to a question that we hear quite often. Uh, in the NLA, within the Aubrey Butte Neighborhood Association from HOAs, and that is the idea of density. So the question comes around, Ben's growing so rapidly. Um, depending on who's telling the story, third fastest, fourth fastest, second fastest growing city in America, but we live here, we know what's going on. Uh, the population grew nearly 50% between 2000 and 2010. I will tell you that the projections are in the next 10 years, uh, between 2020 and 2030, we're expected to go from approximately 100,000 to probably 125,000 plus or minus. Uh, Council Bruce Abernethy um, explained once that the state forces density. And I wanna to speak to that for a minute because that's a fact. The um, Oregon Statute 197, it is a state law. It mandates that states, cities must move in the direction of density before they get new lands approved by the state. That's the process here. Part of the Oregon land use laws are a little bit quirky on occasion, but the fact of the matter is the, the law itself has good intentions. It's an idea to balance urban versus rural. It's an idea to preserve open spaces, which we all enjoy here in Central Oregon, especially. And it's also the idea that it's an anti-sprawl. I mean, that's that was kind of the genesis of this particular law was anti-sprawl. That being said, the state will not grant additional land to cities until those cities have achieved a certain level of density. You don't just get a lot of free land and sprawl. And to that point, in 2010, the state rejected the city of Bend's request for additional lands because Bend hadn't achieved sufficient density. So that being said, and I'm really simplifying, this is very complicated. So forgive me for oversimplifying a complicated issue, but at the end of the day, a state mandate forces more or less our council to move in the direction of density and it's not really an option. And I think that's worth, if, if it's interesting to you, drill down, start with ORS 197. If you have some questions, send them to me. I'm happy to give you more resources to work on, work with, but that's at the end of the day, that's, that's the real issue. State law mandates that we move in the direction of density and urbanization and uh, for good reason and good intention. So that's, that's open for argument and discussion, but that is the law. And with that being said, I'm gonna pass it back to Jeff and he's gonna to talk to you about the two significant bonds that are on our ballot. Jeff?
I have to remember to unmute. So anyway, uh, Hans, thank you very much. You know, since we've been talking about Ben's growth trajectory, uh, let's go ahead and shift our conversation to two key bonds that have a lot to do with growth. And these are bonds that you're going to be voting on in a couple of weeks. First, I'll talk about the transportation bond, and then I'll discuss the library bond. Now, Hans alluded to this earlier uh, with some other comments, but let me reiterate that uh, ABNA is not taking a position on the bonds. Rather, we want to provide some basic information and encourage members to do their own research prior to election day. So that said, uh, we do want to provide some basic information for you to consider regarding, as I said, first off, the transportation general obligation bond. And uh, if it feels like Bend is growing rapidly and stressing our transportation structure, well, the fact is, it is. Bend is now the sixth largest city in Oregon. And according to Census Bureau estimates in 2019, you likely heard our population has surpassed 100,000 residents. That's a lot of new folks in a few short years and basically using the same infrastructure we've had for some time. In fact, according to a personal finance website called WalletHub, Bend is now the third fastest growing city in America. So yes, others have discovered what we love about Bend. The proposed bond, the proposed transportation bond is the output of a two year process of city planners. So city planners working for the city of Bend, working with the citywide transportation advisory committee. And that group considered projects that would assist people who drive, who ride bikes and also walk. The planned projects reportedly match the priorities that are cited in the public opinion research. Always a good thing. The bonds that have been talked about would be repaid on an annual assessment based on real property, estimated to cost property owners an average of 47 cents per $1,000 of your assessed property value. Now that's not market value, that's assessed value. And that would be paid for each year over the repayment period. Now, based on that assessed value or the assessed value of a medium priced home, it's estimated that homeowners would pay an average of $170 per year. And that the actual taxes levied would be less in the early years of the bonds and then peak in the middle years during the construction and then reduce in later years as the various projects come to fruition. Also given our current COVID-19 induced economic challenges, uh, the city council made the decision that the bonds would be structured so that property tax would, be, would not be increased before 2022. Now, that we were talking averages, medians, et cetera, et cetera. So to be as transparent as possible, let's look at this next slide that gives the comparison of the estimated tax impact to homeowners for a home with an assessed value of $220,000 while the average property tax for this valuation is estimated at the $170 per year that I spoke of, the graph charts how the annual tax starts low around $30 if you look in the left bottom left part of your screen, but it hits an estimated uh, peak taxation rate per, of $250 per year in calendar year 2033 when the transportation projects are basically running full steam ahead. Then as the bulk of the projects are completed and paid for, the annual property tax begins to ratchet down and reduce in the later years of the bond. 
Remember, these estimated tax rates are both based on a home with an assessed value of $220,000. So in the spirit of trying to be as transparent as possible for everybody's benefit, let's now take a look at this slide. And the graph looks similar, but the numbers are different. In this slide, we are charting the assessed value of a house with a value, assessed value of $550,000, a valuation that's quite typical of many houses on Aubrey Butte. And in this example, this home with an assessed value of $550,000 has an estimated annual tax rate of $424. Now, similar to the prior side, prior, prior slide, excuse me, the estimated annual tax starts low at $75 in the first repayment year of 2022. And then it ramps up to a peak of $626 in calendar year 2033, when construction again is going full tilt. And as I mentioned earlier, as projects come to fruition, that tax rate starts to reduce in the latter years of the bond. So to help ABNA members better understand what the estimated tax impact on the, of the bond will be based on their individual property assessment, we will supply you with an Excel spreadsheet tool. And all you'll have to do is enter the assessed value of your home into the spreadsheet to determine your individual tax rate. And you'll be able to obtain the current assessed value for your property from the Deschutes County Property Information System that's known as DIAL, D-I-A-L. The website is www.dial.deschutes.org. And in the next few days, we will provide you information uh, of how to secure, or we'll provide you with the link, basically how to get to this spreadsheet, as I say, in the next few days. And you'll be able to go to DIAL, secure your assessment by pop popping in your address, and then you can find out how that tax will impact you. So I've said a lot, and there's a lot more information that you probably will want. So I would ask that you consider checking out the bond details from say the city of uh, Bend website, which has a lot of information on there, including a section with frequently asked questions that provides some really good information. Uh, you could also go and Google uh, you know, transportation bond, and there's lots of information out there, including editorial opinions by the Bend Bulletin. So uh, we wish you good luck with your research there. That said, let's move to the next slide that has to do with the library bond. So the other bond on the ballot that I want to discuss is, you know, essentially uh, very close to the same amount of money, whereas transportation bond was 190 million, this bond is 195 million. Uh, the library bond was placed on the ballot by the Deschutes Public Library Board, who is urging voters to vote yes for the opportunity to secure funding and move forward. Now, if you go and do a little research, you find that this is the first time in 22 years that the library board has actually asked voters help in supporting this type of public improvement project. Uh, the current 38,000 square foot library in downtown Bend opened in 1998, and it was serving a population of 35,000 people. Today, that same library building serves 100,000 Bend residents and a countywide population of just shy of 200,000 residents. The Deschutes County Library Director, a gentleman named Todd Dunkelberg states, and I quote, Customers demands and use of the libraries have changed substantially during the past 20 years. The flexible 
spaces in the proposed buildings would support activities from tutoring students, small group meetings and teleconferencing to job searching and nonprofit assistance. You know, approval of this issue means that the library district can issue up to 195 million in general obligation bonds to renovate Bend, Lapine, Redmond, Sun River, and Sisters library branches, plus double the size of Redmond, the Redmond Library, and build a new state-of-the-art, uh, state-of-the-art library of 115,000 square feet. And that central library, that new central library, uh, would be vacating downtown Bend and moving it to North Bend near the Deschutes County Sheriff's Office. The 12.75 acre parcel upon which the library would be built is you know, planned to be purchased separately for 1.3 million in cash, but it's not part of this bond. That's a different uh, transaction altogether. So let's talk about the cost of this bond to property owners. The estimated tax rate for the bond is 34 cents per thousand of assessed property in 2021. So a year from now, when the first bond payment is expected to be due. A property, once again, with an assessed value of 220,000 would pay approximately $105 per year in additional property tax. However, like the transportation bond graphs, the tax would be low in the early years, then ramp up just a bit with, uh, with the actual construction peaking at $143 in calendar year 2043. So going from 105 to 143 in those peak years, then recede slightly in the latter years of the bond. Once again, since homes on the Aubrey Butte likely have higher assessed values, let's consider the estimated library bond tax on a home on the Butte with a $550,000 assessed value. In this case, the average tax increment is estimated at not $105 that I mentioned before, but rather $264. And the peak tax rate would be $358, but that wouldn't occur to around 2043. So of course, the disclaimer is please note that actual rates may differ due to final interest rates and any changes in assessed property value. So, Obviously, libraries are the hub of a community. They're very important to, to um, most of us, to many, many people. And ABNA urges you, however, to do your research to determine how you believe you should vote on this proposal. We just wanted to whet your appetite with some information so you go and you have more knowledge when it comes time to cast your ballot. Uh, and online searches can provide you with some of this additional background. And so now uh, I'm gonna go turn it back over to Hans to kind of close things out for tonight. Thanks. Hans? Who hasn't done that before? So two points about the library bond. One, there is a lot of construction discussed in various areas, but that does not mean that the downtown branch is gonna be vacated by any means. And also um, trusting the newspaper today, apparently the East branch lease has been renewed for five years. So on the short term, um, obviously on the short term, nothing's gonna be built immediately, but on the short term, Life as we know it with the libraries, at least for Bend, is going to stay the same. So the way it changes is for others in the county, particularly over time. So that being said, there's um, some thank yous I want to extend. And then I want to take a moment to walk you through, because we have the time, uh, we moved a little faster than we had hoped or planned. And I hope we didn't go too fast for anybody, but we always look forward to your questions, your recommendations, your comments. So 
If there's anything we skipped over, anything you want to drill down on, by all means, just send it to board at abnaben.com. Uh, but in terms of thank you, uh, thank you, members. 800 members, 150 members on Facebook. Um, that's what we're all about. It's all about membership. It's about representing the people on the Butte. We want to engage. We want to inform. We want to represent. That's, that's what we're here to do. Uh, we want to urge you to tell your neighbors, hopefully, that you enjoyed this presentation, that you learned something, that it was useful and relevant. But we want to encourage you to find a, a neighbor that maybe isn't registered with us. And hopefully you can endorse us and encourage them to register. Uh, more members are always welcome. We want to be sure that we represent what most of the people on our review want. And the best way to do that is have more members. Um, I would also reiterate, if you have an interest in serving the board, not necessarily as a board member, but just as a support person, we are always interested. To that end, besides thanking our board, my board, for all the work, I want to especially thank ABNA member Stephanie Scott for helping us with this PowerPoint presentation. Uh, I've already thanked all of you, 800 members, 150 Facebook members, but I also want to thank ABNA member Nathan Moses for facilitating this meeting in this format. Uh, I want to thank Connect Central Oregon for making this the technical opportunity it has been and allowing us to reach people via YouTube, um, a new tool that we've not explored before. So thank you, Connect Central Oregon. And then I'd like to just take a moment to just walk you briefly through the last slide. I want to tell you too that we will send a link to every registered member. We will give you a link to access this entire presentation. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be on there for perpetuity. It's not going to time out on you. So if there's anything in this presentation that you want to review, if we skipped something, if we went too fast, if we didn't give you enough detail, this presentation and the questions that might provoke are still available to you. Uh, on the screen, the fonts might be a little small, so I'm gonna walk you through some of these things. The first link is to connect you with the city's website for neighborhood associations. There's a wealth of information there. I encourage you to learn more about how neighborhood associations work in the city of Bend. There's a link to the Neighborhood Leadership Alliance. That's the advisory committee that draws on all the neighborhood associations. And as I said, if you have questions about that or, or how to hear, have your voice heard, I am the representative for ABNA to the Neighborhood Leadership Alliance. There's a link to the transportation bond, the library bond. There's a link to dial so that you can, if you're not familiar with dial, you can simply put in your address or the name in which your property is held and see what your assessed value is. That's the first step. We'll provide you with a spreadsheet that allows you to simply put in your property value, see what the dollar impact of the transportation bond is to you. Firewise USA, um, even if you feel like you're protected, it's a wealth of information, share it with your neighbors. It, it takes all of us, not one safe house is gonna protect a neighborhood. Uh, there's a link there to the Bend City Council Candidate Forum, a very successful forum that was recently held. And I should thank Lisa Mushell of Century West Neighborhood Association and her team for putting together that forum. It had tremendous attendance, tremendous attendance after the fact. And I think you can understand there where the candidates line up on land use. That was the focus of this candidate forum was land use. It's near and dear to us here in the city of Bend. And then lastly, of course, abnabend.com. Um, we hope to be a resource to you. We hope the board is always a resource to you. If you have interests that you want to share with your neighbors and see if there's something that people want to work on with you, we have a forum opportunity on the website. Start a discussion. See who shares your interests. See who wants to work with you. Maybe if nothing else, you make some new friends. So with that, I am going to thank you for your attention. I encourage you to give us any and all feedback. Uh, we will respond as soon as we possibly can but uh, we are here for you. That's the message I'd like to leave you with. And I'd like to thank you for your time tonight. So good night.